Hello everybody, welcome to our next video. This video will strictly deal with uh, going from three shifts to two shifts. Mike Murphy and myself will be trying to explain everything. We have not put a full extensive memo out because there's just a lot to explain and we just thought we'd start at the beginning. Um, as everyone is probably aware, this took a long time to get together. We've been working on this for a long time and we do realize a lot of our members have been through this. It's the auto industry, it has its peaks and valleys, but we do have a lot of members. This will be the first time going through a shift reduction. So we are going to try and uh, really go back to the beginning and try and make sure everybody understands what's going on. Um, our biggest issue is we are running about uh, two shifts of production with about two and four, four tenths of uh, a shift. That's going to get even worse. Uh, we have about 75 people that are going to retire on December 1st, give or take a few. So right now we have about 75 or 80 more holes yet that are going to come next, uh, next week already. Um, this COVID situation has caused a great deal of uncertain, uh, uncertainty in, in our plant and in the entire industry. No one knows what's going to happen in 2021. GM has ordered a lot of their plants to go to two shifts. They have continually asked us to maintain a three shift blueprint, which is really good news, big picture. Um, we want to try and get to three shifts and that's always the goal to stay three shifts, six days a week if we can do it. Um, how did we get here? Basically since January 1st, We've had 475 people retire. That's including the 75 that are going to retire roughly December 1st. So we have close to 500 people that are no longer working in our plant. And to all those people next week, congratulations. And to all 500 that have retired this year, congratulations. That's the ultimate goal for everybody. Um, the biggest issue we've had since we've come back from COVID, um, we're running a two shift operation. We've kept a third of the people home. That was definitely planned at the beginning. Our thoughts were, um, if we had a big outbreak in our plant because nobody was sure what was going to happen, we'd have one third of the people at home at all times. And if it really went through the plant fast, we had to send everybody home. A third of the people could replace them. At least we'd run one shift. That was kind of planned. We haven't been able to get back to three full shifts yet and people keep retiring. What's really happened a lot and we're really getting eaten up on myself and the reps is a lot of people, over 200 people again this week are getting forced in. Next week you might as well say it's going to be closer to 250. Um, but they're going up to people on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays and saying, by the way, we need you in on afternoons next week. By the way, we need you in on days. Uh, by the way, we need you on, on midnights. And if you're completely, if you're a midnight person for the last 18 years, working days does not fit in your lifestyle. Exact same theory as the people that work days uh, don't want to go to midnights. It's not working. I get called to the floor a lot. People who've got little kids at home and now they can't get daycare for two weeks and they're told to go to another shift. We totally understand that. And it's no different than two people or a person working and tearing their kitchen apart and thinking next week they got all week to work on it. And they come up to you on Thursday and say, by the way, you're not laid off. We need your work afternoons next week. And it totally is creating havoc with people's lives, with their kids, with their spouses, um, carpools and everything else. So we have talked to the company. The company are hearing it just as much. We got a lot of people coming up to the counters with the company and they can't keep doing this. It's not working. We have a lot of people who are forced in to work and they're calling in every single day. ER is not touching those people because they totally understand and they're being honest and saying, I got two little kids at home. I can't get daycare. My mom and dad still work and I can't get daycare for two weeks on midnight shift. And then I'm not going to have daycare again for the next two months after that. You're not going to get daycare. They're calling in five days a week. They're getting no money and it's really creating havoc. The company's hearing about that. So they came to us a meeting and said, we're gonna to go to two shifts. Um, we wanna stress very clearly, the company is going to two shifts. The union's not doing that. If we had our way, we'd be three strong shifts, work every Saturday, and our arguments would be about trying to get people off work for a Saturday. We want three shifts. The company really does want three shifts, but at the end of the day, they make the decision to go to two shifts, not us. Um, I also wanna stress since April, um, I do have a temper. In April, I got pretty upset with the company. Um, we went outside the plant. I went to legal for a national. We tried to get packages for our people. As far as we were concerned, we weren't three shifts anymore. According to letter 14 in our book, if we lose a shift, we should get packages to retire and people should be getting a lot more money to retire. Oshawa went through this. Unfortunately, they were closing their plant, except for like 200 jobs. Um, even the lawyers at National told us we are not eligible for paragraph or for letter 14 packages. There are no permanent layoffs. They have to give a six months notice. That's not happening. No one is losing their job. Our plant manager continues even with this scenario that we're going to go through. If anybody doesn't want to be laid off, raise your hand any week. You're coming back into work in the plant. If you can do a job in the plant in, in your department, you might not be on your team because we might have too many. Raise your hand. You will get full wages for that week. 
No one is getting laid off coming up. I want to stress that. We ha I know some people don't care as much and they really want packages. I'd like packages too. I got over 30 years and I'd love to get a package. But I'm also the plant chair. My job is to get jobs in the plant and to keep people from getting laid off. So I'll be very clear. Nobody is getting laid off in our plant coming up. No one's going to be forced to get laid off in our plant. So everybody has a job. That's important. Um, the first questions we had with the company um, was what shifts are you going to run? It's a two shift operation. There's two real obvious choices, midnights and straight days or rotating layoffs A and B. Be totally honest, it was a very short debate. The company, strictly because of costs, have informed us it's going to be A and B. They asked us if we would uh, waive our shift premiums. We're not doing that. I got a lot of phone calls last night, a lot of phone calls. Provided I'm plant chair, I am not waiving shift premiums. We fought way too long to try and get 10% shift premium. We didn't get them last contract. The big three just got them. I'm not here to waive anybody's shift premium ever, and I'm not taking some of the suggestions to take two or three or four dollars less an hour to work midnights. As far as I'm concerned, those are sac sacrilegious. Our wages are a wage, our shift premiums are a shift premium, and we're going to fight like hell next contract to get shift premiums at five and 10%. There may be very few people on midnights, but when we get back to three shifts, you're going to get your 10%. So as far as we're concerned, we're not waiving anything economically. The company made the decision, it's days and afternoons. We talked about midnights and days. It would have been an alternative, but it is more money. And at the end of the day, the company said, no, we're two shifts and it's rotating days and afternoons. So that's what we are. We are gonna be a two shift plant, days and afternoons. The company then informed us, we asked them what their plans were and they said they're gonna follow the contract, paragraph 22. Paragraph 22 clearly states how we, uh, how we reduce people. And basically the long and short of that is one third of everybody in all the departments outside of uh, assembly reduces one third of their people. So one third of paint, one third of QC, materials, welding, you're all going down to the assembly shop. We've got people 15 years that have been trying to get out of the assembly shop. Some people love it, some people don't, some people just want to try something new. There's good jobs and bad jobs in every department. So our implant got together and we started talking and we tried to think of different alternatives, what would work. So we have come up with different ideas. Um, we want to roll them out to you. We've come up with the idea that the company agreed to. It took a lot of uh, meetings, um, but I've got Mike Murphy here, and he is going to explain the, the differences. We do have a different scenario for assembly than we do the rest of the plant, and I want to be very clear. Uh, stamping, which is pretty well all of our senior people, have been two shifts for a long time. They have no effect on this. They stay A and B, and our skilled trades have no effect on this. Our skilled trades will stay three shifts, rotating all three shifts. So this really is everybody in our plant other than skilled trades and our stamping shop. And I'll bring Mike Murphy on now and he will explain what's going on. Hello, I'm Mike Murphy, coordinator, Unifor Local 88. With the announcement of the shop going to two shifts, um, we investigated right away ways to disrupt as few members as possible. We had three key objectives. One was to keep people on a steady shift so they know what shift they were going to um, in the future. So there was a lot of frustration over the time, people getting notified on the Wednesday that, hey, next week you're on afternoons. It is very disruptive to their lives, so we're trying to avoid that. Secondly, we tried to keep members in their departments. As Mike indicated, people have tried for years to get to certain departments, and it's only beneficial to them to keep that department as their home department. The third part is to keep a three-shift blueprint. We really want to make sure, and we've always tried to maintain that three shift blueprint so that if we do go back to three shifts, it would be an easy sell for General Motors to award us with further product. With those objectives in mind, you'd ask what's happening next. So next week, we'll see some postings. There will be primary uh, departmental posting and a secondary plant-wide posting for the jobs that we are still owed throughout the plant. Those will take place on A shift and B shift only. The C shift postings will not take place. So as Mike mentioned, um, the assembly shop will have one method and the rest of the plant will have a different method, but ultimately there will be canvassing beginning right after those postings are confirmed. In the assembly shop, we will have a reduction to a two shift operation. In welding, paint, material handling, and QC, we will run on two shifts, but there will still be a three shift footprint for staffing with the third shift members assigned to A and B shifts. There may be some areas or teams that could run on three shifts and also possible some teams in assembly that may want to have sh three shifts running so they do not lose their skill base. 
I'll start with the General Assembly. Um, first, the team leader reduction. On each team, the junior team leader will be identified and they will be reduced. If the C-shift person is already the junior team leader, there will be no further reduction needed. If they exist on A or B shift, that C-shift person will bump that junior team leader. What will not happen is a C-shift team leader will not bump a B-shift team leader who will then bump an A-shift team leader. The identifying the junior team leaders is taking place. So following this adjustment, the team leaders will be in what's called a red circle situation. I will uh, describe that a little bit later. Next would be the PA reduction. Similar to the team leaders, the lowest seniority team members will be identified. Any discretionary openings on any team will be considered the junior worker. If the C shift member have, has higher seniority than an A or B shift seniority, they would go into the discretionary opening or bump that junior team member. By, it would be canvassed by seniority. There's no case again where a C shift team member will bump a B shift team member who will then bump an A shift team member. The juniors are identified and the bump takes place. Following the reduction, those members will be placed into a limbo group. After the reduction is complete, the limbo group will be canvassed into discretionary openings that exist in the shop. Next, I'll talk about the red circled team leaders I identified earlier. As team leaders are red circled, they continue to receive their team leader premium, the $1 premium. And they will also have the first right of recall to any openings on their team. We'll call these the third team leader. If a team leader from the original red circle team posts out, retires, or otherwise vacates their team, that third team leader will be contacted and will have the first right to go back to that team from which they came as team leader. If the team leader chooses not to return, they will lose their red circle status, they will lose their $1 premium, and they will have no further recourse to be recalled back to their team. Okay, I'm gonna move on to welding, paint, material handling, and QC. There are no reductions in these departments. Members will be temporarily reassigned, but will retain their right to C-shift. The C-shift team leader will assume the duties of the junior team leader on each of the teams if they have seniority. Each team will have three shifts, but will be evenly distributed amongst two shifts. C-shift will be temporarily assigned, temporarily assigned into discretionary openings, uh, that exists and the remaining team members will be canvassed by seniority on the team to balance the shifts. The departments will determine how many uh, members they will have on surplus and layoffs will take place in three month blocks. A union rep and a company rep will be responsible for processing the moves and determining how many people will be required in each area. They will also address any issues that are come up unexpectedly. As members are scheduled to three month blocks, teams may end up with a surplus of members, and members may be utilized in other areas of the department. If there is a surplus in any department, there may be opportunities elsewhere. So including those areas that operate teams on a midnight shift, the junior on the shift in the department may be reassigned outside of their department. As I said earlier, there will be issues that arise, and we'll try to address those as they come up. Thank you. Okay, it's Mike again. I just want to go over some guidelines on how this is going to run and some questions that people asked last night that we want to answer. Uh, for the postings that are coming up, all C-shift members across the plant will have their posting rights uh, reinstalled immediately. Um, you are losing your shift, so, or whatever, you're going off your shift, so everybody gets their posting rights back on C-shift. I just want to explain, some teams could potentially remain as three shifts. We are waiting to hear back from the managers. Just to give you an example, assembly repair, they may turn around and say because of skill and ability, we may keep all uh, everybody in repair. You still may go on two shifts, but they may want to keep all three, uh, all groups working uh, in repair. We could have teams such as the dig group, the mix room, uh, that could all happen. We are also waiting to hear back. Welding is uh, for sure wanting to run a third shift for TPM, so you will see postings for TPM. Uh, paint shop may run a third shift in certain areas for the mix room. So just, we just need some patience for people. We need, this is just coming out in the last few days, so we are trying to get back uh, some answers. Um, C-shift is laid off for the month of January. 
if we follow the schedule that we've been going since uh, we came back from COVID, on our schedule that we had set up to keep the layoffs going that we know we haven't made public, C-Shift was actually laid off for two of the four weeks in January. Um, so really for C-Shift to be laid off in January, it's really only two more weeks than what would have been scheduled. But I just want to be clear to the people on C-Shift, some of you people will not get any, layoff or any layoffs whatsoever. We have over 200 holes right now in the shops. We'll probably have over 250 uh, at some point in December because of all the people leaving. Some people are gonna be tapped on the shoulder. They're gonna know where they're going in December and you're gonna be told that you're gonna work starting A or B shift in December already. So don't think that you're all going home for the month of uh, January. Also, while you're off, you will get phone calls. We are gonna start filling the teams up for training and everything else. A lot of you are gonna to start to come back to work after one week, two weeks, or three weeks of layoff. This is a fairly long process being done fairly quickly. Assembly's already almost down to two shifts, so a lot of you people are gonna be back to work without experiencing many weeks, some no weeks of the layoff. Um, this is a process we have steps to work through. Two rounds of postings are gonna start. One's gonna start next week, the other one I assume right behind it. Um, we can't tell you today, I know a lot of people want that, we can't tell you today where you're gonna be working in January. We've got postings to go through, people can make decisions on where they wanna move and post, and then we got a lot of canvases to get through, so we are asking for some patience. Um, anybody on C-Shift will get their full Christmas pay. Make sure you work your uh, qualifier before the break, but don't worry about the layoff after the company's committed. Everybody on C-Shift obviously will get their full Christmas pay. Um, again, I'm just, I'll repeat a couple of times. We need some patience. There are a lot of reps down on the floor. They won't be able to answer everything. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of postings. People can still retire and put their paperwork in by Monday. We don't even have all the holes yet on where all the postings are going. Um, losing the shift is very tough. It's always, for the people who have been through this in our plant, we've done this, unfortunately, more than once. It's so much easier to go three shifts than it is to lose a shift. So... We are trying to keep a, th a three shift blueprint. That's very obvious. Uh, we are protecting the team leaders. That seems to be an important part of the, uh, the GM philosophy, the CAMI philosophy. That is why all the GM team leaders are gonna continue to be paid a dollar. And it's also a good reason why we should try and get them a long overdue raise next contract as well. But the team leaders will be protected, um, at least given first choice to go back to their teams. Um, every department based on staffing needs We'll be getting the opportunity by seniority to go home on three month blocks. I think people can figure out what we're saying. So you can start thinking about that as well. We're gonna have a lot of extra people in the shops outside of assembly. Uh, there'll be lots of opportunities for a lot of people to go home for up to three months. You will get sub pay while you're off as well. So that includes uh, pension credits while you're off. That probably will look very good for a lot of people, especially those that are looking to retire at some point next year might just elect to stay home for the next little while. And again, every three months we'll, we'll, re, we'll be repeating that process. Um, and then finally in closing, in 2021, we are likely gonna see our uh, retirements continue. I don't think we're gonna get 500, but we could easily get two or 300 over the next few months. I do believe um, we are gonna get to a two shift operation, a pure, clean one without anybody having to elect to go off or any layoffs or anything like that. So at some point, I believe in 21, we will be a two shift plant, just clean and everybody's working. Hopefully we get a call someday from GM that we are in fact going back to three shifts, the COVID's cleaned up and maybe our sales take off and we are truly back to a three shift plant. Uh, I know GM has put uh, the Cami tops through a little bit of a drill to see how fast we can get to three shifts. We're gonna have to hire hundreds and we have that ready to go as well. Obviously, the union doesn't hire, but we're fully, fully back bringing two, three, four hundred people from the street into full-time jobs. That's always going to be the ultimate goal. But until then, I know I've said it, please just give us a little bit of uh, uh, patience. And in closing, I just want to thank uh, the Communications Committee for all their helps doing these uh, videos. Obviously, uh, Mike Murphy, myself, and Joe Graves aren't uh, paid actors, but we're doing the best we can. We're trying to get the word out to everybody. We will have a write-up for the rep, so when they're walking around and you have some questions, you can ask them. And we're not kidding anybody. We're not, uh, we're not perfect at this. We know there's going to be some speed bumps. We know there's some questions out there that we have not thought of. We've done our best to think of them, but as they come up, we'll try and uh, knock them off as we go and hopefully get through this. But uh, thanks for your patience, and uh, I guess Joe and I are going to do one more video right before Christmas, but until then... Take care and thank you.